our first stop for today is the National Kite Festival here in the capital Colombo. In Sri Lanka, August is kite season. The winds are strong and the kids are on summer vacation. The kites you get to see here are absolutely incredible and come in many shapes and sizes. On a day like this, young and old come out for a day of windy fun on the beach. Earlier today at the Kite Festival, I met a few youngsters who invited me right here to their village to show me a little bit about how these kites are made. Let's go and check it out. Hey, what's up? What's up, man? All right, guys, this is the gang. And um, this right here is the house of the Vera Singer family who have kindly agreed to open their house for us. Mama Nirmal, Mama Ravindu. Mama Kavindu. Api Adan Nemorare. Mama Rand. Mama Tejan. Api Adan Nipe. Api Adan Nekombu. Api Adan Nekombu. Api Adan After a super fun afternoon building kites with these guys, we now came to the local lake to see if these things actually fly. So what do you say, guys? Are you ready to show the world how to fly some kites? Yes! All right, let's do this. All right, man, this was just the beginning of today's episode, but there are plenty of more amazing places and cool stories that I want to show you right here on the Paradise Island of Sri Lanka. So let's hit back on the road and explore. Sri Lanka is famous all over the world for its aromatic spices and exotic condiments. Long, long ago, it was these spicy riches which brought invaders and traders from all over the world to this very land. Until this day, Sri Lanka is a treasure trove of tastes, aromas, and smells. And I invite you all to join me as I take you on the island spice trail to discover how these spices are farmed and how the world famous Sri Lankan curry powders are produced. This right here is a traditional Sri Lankan island spice shop. Smack down in the middle of a busy alley, it is the perfect place for the locals on their way home to pick up a few ounces of sugar, spice, and all things nice. I tell you, when you pop open one of these lids, <laughs> the aroma and the smell and color that immerses from it are absolutely breathtaking. Popping open one of these lids is like opening the door into a different universe. A universe of color, aroma, and smell. This is the world of the Sri Lankan Spice Trail. Way back in the days of the colonial masters, these commodities were traded their own weight in gold. And only kings, noblemen, and the rich could afford these exotic treasures. These are just some of the treasures of Ceylon. Turmeric, coriander, cloves, and chili. Today, pretty much all these condiments are no more rarities, no luxuries, but are found in the kitchens 
all across the world. These misty mountains here behind me are the beautiful highlands of Sri Lanka. And this is where the spices and treasures of Ceylon are grown. Amidst these misty mountains, you will find plenty of spicy states like this. With me is Bandara, a worker here on the estate who's gonna show us how the peppers, the cinnamons, and all the treasures of Ceylon are grown right here on my paradise island of Sri Lanka. So, Bandara, what's the variety of spices that you grow here? Siloma kulu badwar ke mahi tiyenu. Siloma? Oh. Oh. Enna mam penna. Hari. Me gamis wagawa. Me lapati gamis karla. Me pahila vela kudu karla api ahare ta ganni. Me tiyenne karambu gahak. Me vidiyata vela api paribojana ta ganni. Me tiyenne kurunduwa gawak. Loke hondama kurudu tiyenne Lankawi. All right, guys, I took you to the spice garden, but I tell you what, there's another awesome tree right here. You know what this is? <laughs> Our favorite stuff. This is coffee, man. Me old spice gahak. Siyalo ma kulu badu le suwande me gahi antar gata vela tiye na. Me thama ina sal gahak. Me vidhe ke ina sal gahi mule mal hadila. Me mali na gedi hadila. Me ina sal. So these spices we just saw in the jungle, are they useful in that form, or is there another process that it needs to be done before you can turn them into curry powders? Bhai, oh, idhar pa hoychi karan na bhai. Oh, wah hundar te, pehila, idila, veilila, ite pas se kudu karla powder rasin thama pe pa hoychi karan non. So we saw the stuff is grown. Well, let's go back in the city and see how the stuff is processed. Boom. So this right here is one of those authentic Sri Lankan traditional curry mills. With me is Kumara, a good friend of mine, and he's going to show us a little bit of the process of how to actually produce these tasty Sri Lankan curry powders. Most Sri Lankans do not go to the shop like you and me and buy their ready-made curry powder, but actually grind their curry powders right here in the back of their own kitchens. It's not just one thing that goes in a curry powder. There are 30 to 35 different secret ingredients well kept by every family what actually goes into this super tasty Sri Lankan curry powder. <laughs> oh, guys, I wish you could smell this stuff, man. I feel like going home and cooking some rice and curry with that stuff right now. But uh, no time for that, because there are plenty of more places and cool stories that I want to show you in today's episode of Crossroads. As we continue to tour the beautiful island of Sri Lanka, right now, we're here in Nigambo. The reason I came here to Nigambo is because it's a really perfect place to make my next point. You see, I told you, Sri Lanka is a predominantly Buddhist and Hindu country, right? But because of the invaders, most of the coastal areas, especially here on the west coast and down south, the people are predominantly Catholic. And with that change in religion, there is quite a change in their lifestyle and their foods as well. So today, I invite you to roam a little bit around this really cool fishing town of Nigambo and just check out the atmosphere and the lifestyle of the people right here. Let's check it out. So 
yes, guys, the reason why so many people here on the coastal belt are Christian is pretty much because of these very waters. Because those waters brought Sri Lanka its invaders. The Portuguese, the British and the Dutch, none of those nations knew anything about Hinduism or Buddhism when they came to this land. So what did they do when they came here? They brought their religion with them. And I guess after landing on these shores, a lot of the rural folks here on the coastal belt converted and they too became Christian. But what I find so amazing here in Sri Lanka is that despite the relatively small size of the island, you find so much diversity in this little place. I mean, just check it out. For this small island, there's so many different cultures, so many different customs, and so many different religious beliefs. The main four are Buddhism, Hinduism, Catholic, and Muslims. But all four of them totally tolerate each other and live together on this beautiful island. All right, guys, as we get ready to leave Nigambo and hit back on the road to discover more amazing places right here in Sri Lanka, there is one more place I really want you all to check out because, man, I think that's something that happens only here in Sri Lanka. This right here is a house, so let's get out and check it out. All right, guys, let's go and check this out. You all hear that sound? Sounds like a bunch of women weeping, right? Man, let's go inside and check this out. So you all thought this was some funeral or some sad occasion, right? Hell no, man. They're just practicing. This is what they do for a living. This is their job. You all don't believe me? You want to check it out again? All right, let's do this. These ladies right here are professional weepers. <laughs> You're gonna go like, wait a minute. Why would you arm professional weepers? Well, it's actually quite simple. Imagine you have a sad occasion, like a funeral, a divorce, or anything where you want people to be sad. Well, I tell you what, you give these ladies a call, they'll come with 10 of them, 20 of them, 50 or even 100 of them to your sad occasion and they'll cry and cry until you say stop. There's a whole heap of them, and they'll come and make sure on your sad occasion, everybody's gonna cry, because crying is what these ladies do for a living. Crying is their job. Hey, this is nothing new. What these ladies are doing is a tradition that has been done for hundreds of years. These ladies right here are known all over Sri Lanka as the weeping ladies of Nigambo. That's a fact. Thank you very much, ladies. Have fun crying. <laughs> Bye. That's pretty cray cray, right? But man, that's a true fact, and it happens right here in Sri Lanka. Payments? Man, there is no price, there is no tariff. You pay them what you think is appropriate. Want to give them a dollar? Want to give them a $1,000? They'll take it, and they'll be happy. And I tell you what, it's a pretty lucrative business, too. So as we leave these ladies to their crying, we all better hit back on the road as I continue to take you all to my favorite places right here on the island of Sri Lanka. Let's roll. Shiva.
This magical place right here is the Muneshwaram Koval. The Muneshwaram Koval is one of Sri Lanka's most ancient places of worship for the Hindu deity Shiva. It dates back thousands of years. As you can see from the structure of the walls, this is a very ancient place. Not only is this place one of my favorite Hindu Kovals here in Sri Lanka, but it is the perfect location for us to embark on our next journey. Today, I want to take you around the island to explore a little bit about the beautiful, colorful lifestyle of the Hindu Tamil people of Sri Lanka, who are Sri Lanka's second largest ethnic community. For you all to understand a little bit more about the lifestyle and customs of these Hindu people here in Sri Lanka, I want to try to briefly explain to you a little bit about Hinduism. Because Hinduism is so much more than just a religion, but it is rather a deeply conscious way of life. Most Hindus are strict vegetarians and all follow the laws of karma and moksha and believe in reincarnation and the eternal circle of life. Hindus pray to a pantheon of deities and much in contrast to the Buddhist temples here in Sri Lanka which are mostly plain and white, Hindu temples or kovals as they are known are super colorful and decorated with millions of deities. All in all, Hindus really love everything colorful. This is Jaffna, or Yalparam as it's known to the locals. Located about 55 miles off the coast of India, this city was once Sri Lanka's second largest city next to the capital of Colombo. With the country back at peace after 30 years of civil war, today Jaffna is rising again from the ashes, trying to restore its ancient glory. The population here, in the north of the island, are predominantly Hindu Tamil. Hardly anyone here speaks Sinhalese, and finding road signs and boards in Singhala is quite a rarity. However, English is widely spoken. Jaffna, in many ways, feels more like South India rather than Sri Lanka. And hey, last but not least, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking here. And also do activate the notification bell so that you know when we uploaded a new clip. If you like our content, please also feel free to share it on your social media handles and help us to spread the love.